Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Thursday, August 27th, 2020. This is your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Shaken Analytics. Find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Shaken Analytics. Head over to shakenanalytics.com forward slash today where you can sign up for a free email to follow along with a lot of the content that I get from this show as well as get daily stock ideas to consider, and that hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities finished mostly higher on Wednesday, near the best levels of the day as the SPY and the Q's logged record closes. Comm services, tech, and consumer discretionary were the best performers at the sector level. Energy, the bond proxies, and financials lagged the rally, as did small caps. Treasuries were mixed with the curve steepening. The dollar was stronger against the euro, but weaker against the yen. Gold was up 1.5%. UTI crude added on 10 basis points for the day. So we get to the desk this morning. Futures are down about 30 basis points in early trading. Growth and momentum plays continue to provide the upside leadership for the market. Asian equities were mostly lower overnight. European markets are weaker today as well. Treasuries are unchanged to slightly stronger. The dollar is flat versus the major crosses. Gold is down 20 basis points. WTI crude is off 30 basis points. And all ears will be on Fed Chairman Powell today uh, during the virtual Jackson Hole Summit, where he is expected to lay out his framework as it relates to uh, inflation and possible impact on interest rates. We'll touch on that a little bit later on uh, in the show, but we do have more new highs for the market leaders. Uh, yesterday with the S&P 500 continuing to grind to the upside to another record. The Qs, same story there. Touched on the fact that small caps are not quite there yet. Uh, kind of hovering around their June high. So we bump up support for the S&P 500, uh, 3,300 to 3,400, which we raised this week. Uh, 3,250 below that starts to bring the 50-day moving average into play. We are trading at record highs, so there is no price-based resistance uh, by definition uh, at this point in the rally as we have cleared all previous resistance levels. We are overbought in the near term if we look at the 13 period CCI and the three day moving average of that and shaken money flow is strongly bullish. So from an indicator standpoint, we're overbought within the context of an uptrend with solid accumulation uh, as we trade uh, at record levels for the S&P and for the Qs. What I would say is um, we'll talk about divergences. We've talked about sentiment, uh, just some data points to be aware of while continuing to respect uh, the uptrend in prices and the, you know, the, the performance of <clears throat> the leaders throughout this rebound from the March lows. So let's talk about the market in a minute. What are we writing about today? Well, we hit on the fact that the spies and the cues uh, set records yesterday. Small caps actually closed down on the day. The equal weight S&P 500 is still below its June peak and has seen a downtick in its relative strength of late. So that speaks to concentration of performance, uh, right? We talk about participation. We look at breadth from trend metrics, which we'll look at later on in the show. But what's happening is the big leaders are continuing to lead and provide the majority of the performance, which is why the, e which is why the equal weight index is struggling to get back above its June peak. We're wondering what Chairman Powell will have to say and its impact on rates today. Breath metrics continue to diverge with the index. And as I said, futures do point to a lower open here today. And if we dig in on the major indices from a power bar perspective, we can see the Dow added 27 basis points yesterday, 11 to four bulls to bears there. So a little bit of a deterioration throughout this week. S&P 500 up 1%, 166 to 64 uh, to the good on the ratio there. NASDAQ, your big outperformer at the index level, up over 2% yesterday, 38 to five bulls to bears. As I said, small caps ticked lower. Still a solid power bar ratio, however, 655 to 297 bulls to bears. Bonds down tick, sending yields higher. And at the sector level, Calm Services were your leadership group, up 3.4% yesterday on the back of monster moves in names like Netflix and Facebook, 10 bulls, zero bears in the Calm Services XLC ETF. According to the Cheek and Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks remain bullish. Major markets across the board are mixed. Now we're going to hit our stock of the day or stocks of the day. Uh, continuing with this theme of once a week hitting you with what I think is an interesting screen. And, and the, the thought process behind today's screen is 
extended names within this uptrend, right? We, Qs are overbought, SPY is overbought. So what I wanna do is look for some extended names uh, that could potentially provide an opportunity for those who look at them uh, to, you know, number one, maybe take some profits if that's how you manage your, your portfolio and manage your risk. But another way to think about it is to maybe take advantage of the fact that these names have run. And if you have existing positions and you want to continue to respect the trend, but are mindful of the extended nature, potentially dig in and look at some overwrite strategies, whereas maybe you sell some calls against existing positions. So that's the thought process behind this screen. And if we run through it, I use the Russell 3000 as a starting universe. And I looked for stocks with a rating of neutral or better. Uh, so neutral, bullish or very bullish within our 20 factor model. Uh, and then I wanted names that were trading at or near six month highs that were above uh, our upper volatility band and also overbought, right? So you think about uh, whether you use, if some folks might use Bollinger Bands, we use um, something similar to a, a Keltner band and just kind of highlight the extended nature here, especially when a stock is above the upper band and overbought by our overbought oversold indicator. Uh, so you can get a sense for some of the names that meet that criteria, right? Adobe, a big day yesterday. FedEx has had a huge move of late. Synopsis, Tesla, right? So if you own these names, and you want to think about maybe uh, trimming some, I think that that could make some sense if that's how you do it, or if you want to continue to hold the names, but think that there could be some potential for near-term consolidation or even uh, pullbacks, you could potentially protect yourself and generate uh, some income by writing call options against these positions. So take a look at this screen, uh, especially if you own any of those names. Let's hit our sector tracker now. The movement of the major sectors over the last five days continues to point to the type of leadership for which we have been bullish. Uh, Calm Services, big day yesterday, bumps it to the top of the list. Technology, also a good day yesterday, remains in the number two spot. And discretionary is strong group. So this is these are your offensive, like, you know, get aggressive uh, type areas of the market that have been leading. Again, somewhat extended uh, in the near term. Industrials, materials, REITs, and FINs are middle of the road. Remember, industrials and materials are the two cyclical sectors of the market that we are uh, more bullish on as opposed to, say, the financials and energy. Uh, Staples, defensive group, lagging healthcare. We've talked about the deterioration and relative strength in the healthcare sector for the past uh, weeks slash maybe even over a month now. Utilities, the bond proxies are under pressure uh, as rates move higher. Also some thoughts potentially of dividend cuts, thoughts in the marketplace. It's not the call that I'm making, but uh, realistically rates have ticked higher of late. So, and today could be a big day with Fed Chairman Powell speaking. And then there's energy at the bottom of the list, a group for which we just have not been able to find any love at all. Uh, our industry and in focus, uh, aerospace and defense has been a laggard over the past six months underperforming the S&P 500 by nearly 22%. Power bar ratio, which looks at future potential is weak, seven bears for six bulls, and it's currently ranked towards the bottom, number 18 of 21 subsectors. So some of the names there that we want to avoid, maybe even look for opportunities on the bearish side of the portfolio, Axon Enterprises, AAXN, Hexel, HXL, and Spirit Aerosystems, SPR, all have uh, very bearish or bearish. E, uh, check and power gauge ratings. And if we look at the fund, it kind of lines up with the rating for the fund. Uh, bearish ETF rating for XAR. There's that ratio skewed towards the bears. Now the trend is strong because we're above the trend line, but look at the underperformance. Uh, this group's been lagging the market since pretty much the October timeframe. So nearly a year uh, of underperformance for the aerospace and defense group. And it's actually uh, picking up some steam to the downside of late. Essentially what we're seeing here is sideways action as the S&P goes higher, leading to a further deterioration in the relative strength for XAR. So not a group on which we can get overly excited or even remotely excited really. Uh, so something to keep in mind as you're looking for ideas and doing your work in the marketplace. Let's take a look at what's trending now. Yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers, salesforce.com's earnings set off a flurry 
uh, of upside in the software space, up 26%. Monster move yesterday for Salesforce. Netflix uh, up on some comments in a Roku note out of City. Uh, Adobe software name traded at a 52-week high. Facebook 52-week high, up 8% yesterday, and ServiceNow, N-O-W, up 6.5% to a 52-week high. As again, Salesforce, Adobe, and now all part of the software group, which ripped higher yesterday uh, on the back of that uh, earnings report out of Salesforce.com. On the loser side of the board, Norwegian Cruise Line uh, down as Carnival said that they are canceling some of their sailings into 2021. SLG down with the REIT group, especially those related to office REITs. And then Hess, Fang, and Oxy uh, all down over 4%. Um, Energy Week, some inventory data uh, as it relates to crude. Uh, weighing on these names, I think it's more a function of the sector. Uh, right, energy has just been a relative laggard, same as the financials. Right, so it's something that we've been talking about for quite some time. Uh, that trend very much in place. So let's dig into the charts now. Uh, the breadth divergences have our attention um, across time frames. Uh, we've seen a series of lower highs. Uh, for these breadth metrics. So if we're looking at the percentage of stocks above their 200-day moving average at the top of the chart, uh, you can see a persistent uh, series of lower highs, uh, especially as the market has rallied off of those March lows now, uh, right? We're seeing some, some lower highs as the index moves higher. Same goes for the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average. Series of lower highs since topping out here in the late May, early June timeframe. Uh, so these are divergences. What do divergences mean? They're a wake-up call, not an immediate, you know, hey, do something, but be aware of it. Make sure you have a disciplined risk process in, in place. Maybe you temper your aggression levels, especially when you combine it with the sentiment work we talked about yesterday. The fact that the markets like the Qs uh, and the Spire are extended and overbought in the near term. I showed you the screen of extended names. So just something to keep in mind as we put these data points together. Additionally, you have the advantage advanced decline line for the S&P 500, which has been in sync with the market since the March lows, right? Series of higher highs, uh, oftentimes leading the market. Now what we saw was a breakout that led the market. So we had a breakout to new highs uh, back in late July ahead of this spike in the S&P 500 that we've seen over the past week or week and a half. But subsequent to that, now we've seen lower highs uh, over the past few days as the market has continued to move higher. So something that we're keeping in mind, still holding the breakout level, but it is a small divergence that we get that gets added to some of the things that we're looking at, right? So we've been bullish on the market, we're respecting the trend, but we are mindful of what could potentially crop up. What does that mean? Again, solid risk management process in place and followed uh, is the best way, right? However, that whatever that means for you, however you manage risk, make sure your process uh, is fully in place. Uh, speaking of participation, breadth and performance, the equal weight S&P 500, this is an interesting chart because as the S&P 500 is trading above those February highs, the equal weight version uh, is not even above its June high yet. Uh, overbought uh, RSI, holding bullish ranges above the moving averages, but look at that relative strength going down to new relative lows against the S&P 500 itself. So again, what does this mean? It means that the best performing names, uh, it's a smaller and smaller group and it's concentrated in the largest name. So you have to think about what that means from a stock picking standpoint and whether or not you have a good process for identifying the names that are likely to perform the best. So uh, just something to keep in mind in light of the work uh, that we've been doing here of late. And then all ears are going to be on Chairman Powell today. Take a look at the 10 year yield. Kind of interesting here is it's been backing up over the past couple of weeks, really since the beginning of August. Positive divergence here at the lows from the RSI. So we want to pay attention to rates and what that could mean for different sectors of the market. Uh, Chairman Powell speaking at 910 Eastern time uh, this morning. So that's going to wrap us up. Take us for a test drive. I'm back tomorrow. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.